If you are a game developer, you probably heard about object pooling. In this video, I will explain briefly what is object pooling and which problem does it solve. Then, we will try to understand when to pool or not to pool objects by doing a few performance comparisons. First, let's explain briefly what is object pooling. In most games, it is very common to need to spawn and destroy a lot of objects. For example, a weapon firing bullets or spawning enemies over time. When you spawn objects, you allocate memory. However, this memory is still allocated even if you destroy the object. This is called creating garbage. Then, at specific moments, the garbage collector cleans that memory so that it can be used again. This is convenient because it makes sure that you can reuse memory. However, triggering the garbage collector can result in performance issues, especially on low-end devices. With object pooling, we still allocated memory when creating objects, but instead of destroying them, we will disable them. This means that the next time we need to spawn an object, we can re-enable a disabled object instead of creating a new one. By reusing objects, we prevent allocating and deallocating memory constantly and therefore preventing the garbage collector to interfere with the execution of our game. If you want to know more about object pooling, I have put a great link in the description. Alright, now let's try to answer the question, to pool or not to pool. We will use this scene to make our investigation. This is the main scene of a roguelite game. A lot of things are spawned and destroyed here. The enemies, the bullets shot from the player's weapon, the experience pickups, and the VFX that appear when enemies are spawned and destroyed. If you also want to build this roguelite game from scratch, you can watch the tutorial series I have made. Currently there is no pooling at all. All the objects are instantiated and destroyed. Let's take a look at the performances. Let's play the game and open the profiler. Then, if we select a certain frame, we can check the GC alloc column. If you have a number here, this means your code is creating garbage and that it will have to be cleaned up by the garbage collector at a certain point. We can see that spawning bullets creates garbage, as well as spawning enemies. Basically, every call to instantiate. We also notice that our game runs at around 25 FPS in the editor, which is not great. Now let's take the exact same scene, but where everything is pooled. Let's play the game, and let it run for a bit. We need to give some time so that the pooling takes effect we have to wait that the pooling system reuses the disable objects instead of spawning new ones. Ok, let's take a look at the profiler now. We can see that we don't create any garbage anymore. We also notice that our FPS is a bit higher, around 40 now. If we stop here, we could conclude that pooling is better and that we should always do it. However, testing performances in the editor is not the accurate way to test performances. We should always profile on runtime builds. Remember, that the only thing the player will interact with will be a build of your game, not the editor version. So always make sure to test your builds. Therefore, I have made two Windows builds, and here are the results. As you can see, both builds run at 60 FPS. In this case, it does not appear to matter much if objects are pooled or not. Wait, what? All this work to make a video about pooling and actually there is no visible gains in performances? Let's try to understand this. If we take a closer look at the actual amount of garbage that was generated, we can see that the amount is around 40 kilobyte per frame. To be honest, I am not sure if it is a lot or not. According to ChatGPT, it turns out that a few kilobytes per frames is actually not a big deal, especially on computers. He mentions also that memory is usually a problem for low-end mobile devices. I have to say that I totally agree with him on this one. Let's continue the experiment by making two Android builds. When we compare the mobile versions, we can see a huge difference. The unpooled version runs at 30 FPS on average compared to the pooled version that runs at 60 FPS. ChatGPT's amount of garbage per frame was a bit random, but at least it hinted us to profile on mobile, which I have not seen a lot of YouTubers do. Well, let's summarize our findings. 1. Do you have a core mechanic in your game that instantiates and destroys a lot of objects? 2. Do you have a performance issue due to garbage collection? A good rule to keep in mind is to never optimize before profiling. And 3. Does it even matter to improve performances? Maybe you are just making a prototype or a proof of concept and performance is simply not important at this point. If the answer to all these questions is yes, then you might want to consider implementing pooling. I hope this approach gives you a different perspective on object pooling.
A lot of developers, myself included, tend to worry about performance before it is actually a problem. Improving performances is usually way easier than to make a fun game. If you want to learn how to implement object pooling in a real game, go watch my video about it. There are also plenty of great solutions for object pooling on the Unity Asset Store. I have put all the useful links in the description. Leave a comment below to share your opinion about pooling and don't forget to join our Discord channel. All the useful links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.